Hello and welcome to the Supercast. I'm your host, Superintendent Anthony Godfrey. It was a music video made from the heart and souls of some very talented West Jordan High School students under the direction of choir teacher Keith Evans. On this special 200th edition of the Supercast, meet members of the West Jordan High pop group Encore and find out why popular music artist Jason Mraz reached out to them with a message the students will likely remember for a lifetime. We're here at West Jordan High School in the choir room with choir director Keith Evans and with members of the pop vocal ensemble Encore. Now, I've seen your work over the years as people have enthusiastically emailed me the videos that you've put together out on the Salt Flats, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Those are amazing videos, high production quality, and at first you're taken by the scenery, but you're very quickly mesmerized by the vocal performance. It's really incredible. I always look forward to that. People generally know that I'm a music fan, so I always get it from various sources. They always send me your video each year, which is really cool for me, and I'm really excited to finally get to talk with some of you about it. Uh, so we're, we're going to talk with the director here first, and tell me a little bit about Encore's history and, and purpose. Yeah, so um, when I took the job from my predecessor, Kelly DeHaan, he's a very well-known... Um, you took the job from I your predecessor. You wrestled him to the ground and was, said, Give me that. it's over. No, as I'm matter, taking over. As a matter of fact, he, he texted me and said, hey, I'm moving, I'm moving high schools. Would you like to throw your hat in the ring yeah. to, to be the replacement? And I thank him forevermore for that text. Um, but Kelly um, is well-known in the, in the community as very classically trained. I am not. Um, my background is pop music. Um, I, I sang with a pop group at BYU as a student, and I've mostly worked in that realm. And so when I took this job, I said, I can't be another Kelly DeHaan, and I shouldn't try to be. I'm going to be me. And so I took one of, his, one of the um, choir ensembles, which was called Junior Madrigals, and I said, we're going to do what I know instead. And we turned it into Encore which is a pop a cappella ensemble. It's small. There's 11, 12. There have been as, as many as 16 uh, you don't members. You combine it into pop a cappella or something pop like that. No, no, other groups have done that before, and it's a little cringe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, we came up with the name Encore, and we said what we're going to do is what I know, and it's, it's covers and occasionally original music of contemporary music. Um, I feel like there's a lot of contemporary music that, that – that purists kind of turn their nose up to and ignore. Thank you. For whatever reason. Yes, it gets overlooked. It does. People say, well, you know, it wasn't written 400 years ago by a person in a powdery wig, so why should we care? Right. And, and, and I think that there's, there's a lot of great music that gets missed because of that. And so Encore focuses on this newer stuff. And, and frankly, that's one thing that gets the kids so excited is they're able to sing stuff that, oh, I, you know, I listened to that guy already in the car. You know, that person's on my playlist or whatever. Um, and so our other choirs are very, very traditional, like you'd expect a choir, um, any high school to be, but Encore is a little bit different. And for the last three years, we've been focusing on that. And one of the elements of Encore's mission is to engage the students in all aspects of music production, including music videos, which is a huge element in any music, musical artists, you know, um, oeuvre that they do these days. Ever since I was in middle school, it has been an important component Thank of you, pop music. Yes, yes that's exactly. Right. That's right. So uh, I'm going to butcher the quote, but I agree with you that there's, there's so much great music overlooked. The quote from Duke Ellington that I've always mm -hmm. uh, liked is, if it sounds good, it is good. <laughs> oh, I love that. I've never heard that before, but that's I'm putting that in my phone when, when, when we're done today. There's a lot that sounds good out there. Yeah. And that is good out there that gets overlooked. Like you said, I'm a huge pop mu music fan. And uh, so I'm, that's, that's only part of why I'm excited to, to talk with you today. No, I'm so glad. I didn't know you were a pop music fan, Dr. Godfrey. That's, that's cool. So am I. Um, and hopefully at the end of the year, I can look at my students and say that they are too, even if they weren't as familiar with it at the beginning of the year. So... Uh, Let's talk with some of the members of Encore about what being in Encore has meant to you. Uh, introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about your experience. Um, my name is Nate. Um, I joined Encore this year um, as a junior um, and kind of joined this class. I had a couple of the seniors that were in it just kind of tell me, oh, you do kind of well in it, I think, and so you should audition. And I did, and I got in, and I was terrified because I am more of a musical theater performer and much less of a pop music, and I'm not super familiar with it. 
But I got into the class, and just the minute that we stepped into that class, it was basically just a family. We were able to connect really well with each other because it was so small. And we just, like, the first day just kind of huddled around the piano and just started, like, singing together. And it was just a really cool and magical experience just to, like, connect and create music with each other. And it was just really awesome and magical. I'm Ellie. Um, Encore was the first choir I did. I didn't want to do choir at all, but then I went to one of the pop concerts, and I was like, oh, wait, this is actually kind of cool. I kind of want to do that. So I saw Encore, and I was like, okay, maybe I should try it. And I did, and it was really fantastic. I'm, I'm Antonella, and honestly, Encore is my favorite music class for somebody that loves music. I love all kinds of varieties, and it's just amazing. But Encore has just been such an amazing experience. Um, when I heard that I was finally allowed to audition for Encore, um, some people actually told me that they didn't think I was fit for Encore because I'm more of a classical kind of girl. Um, wow. uh, yeah, I was, I'm more of just like a musical theater, more of like opera kind of, you know. Um, and honestly, I was like, you know, I think Encore is actually fitting more for me because um, I love reading music and it, just, it gives such a big opportunity to read music. So I joined and I don't regret it at all. And I just wish everybody could do it. You know, it's, it's so fun. Um, and I'm really grateful that we have this opportunity, and it just it brings us all together and gives us a lot of friendships. So yeah. I'm Xander. I got thrown in like two weeks after they got together, so they were already a family by then. So <laughs> they adopted you, but yes. how how did you get in without an audition? Oh, there was an audition. Antonella said that they were even discouraging her from the audition. So there are some layers to getting in. How did you make it in after it started? I mean, I took classes because there was an empty seat, not because my talents brought me there. So tell me about how you got into the class after the family had formed. Um, well, they needed an extra guy, and Keith, during Madrigals, was like, we need an extra spot for Encore. And I didn't have a class during that period, so I'm like, might as well. So I auditioned, and so did a couple of other people, and I just got it, apparently. Apparently, apparently because you are here, and I the year here. has lapsed, this and you have been a participant throughout that year. Yes, and it was quite the experience. I didn't expect any of it. I'm not very good at making up like music on my own. I usually go by the books and try to read the music and do my best on that. Yeah. I'm best at making it up on my own because then there are no rules at all. <laughs> so I haven't broken any rules. I've just made the music that I want to make. No one can tell you you're wrong. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's exactly it. Um, now, tell me about a song that you have loved this year that you did not expect to or that you didn't know before you were a part of Encore. There was a song that we just kind of did at the beginning of the year, and it was called um, Lose Somebody by One Republic. We did this song for the last, like, two years. Every year that Encore has existed, I wanted to do Lose Somebody by One Republic, and finally this year we were, we were up to snuff to be able to do it. And so we, we, that was, it was probably like the second day that we were in this class, and we're like, we're going to start creating it. Like, no sheet music, no tracks, it hasn't been done before we're just gonna do it and so we like started talking about like parts and who's gonna sing what and we just started doing it and I was really skeptical of like how this was gonna go um because we just kind of had kind of created it on its like on our own um and then we performed it at the first concert and people just loved it and I ended up just falling in love with that song it was so much fun to sing um and I think for a lot of us it was just one of our favorite songs because it just it was it showed us how we could create something on our own um and together as well and it helps that every performance is an encore performance, mm -hmm. and people seem to clap more loudly for an encore performance. Yeah. So it's a subconscious little little prodding to the audience too. We're we're getting an encore performance that's, right from the start. That's right. This feels amazing. <laughs> uh, okay, tell me tell me about a, a song that you discovered through encore. Oh uh, well, it wasn't really discovered, but my favorite that we did was probably Cruella Deville. We worked, we started working at it in like September of yeah. last year. But we're like, this is too hard. We're not going to do it. But we all just loved it so much, and we pushed so hard to like perform it. But like he didn't trust us, I guess. Cause, uh, <laughs> no, you now what? Now, now I'm quit. sensing a, I'm <laughs> sensing a lot of trust, but I'm sensing a high bar, a high standard. Well, we are not going to massacre this song. We are going to do it justice. Well, to clarify, so I was I was the faculty director of a 
performing ensemble at BYU uh, for several years called Noteworthy, and this was one of their arrangements. So this was an arrangement that I had given to collegiate level, some who were literally music majors, right, and that had put together this really tricky jazz piece. And then I and I said, I wonder if we can do it in encore, if if we can take this collegiate piece and have the high schoolers do it, and. It took a little bit of doing is all. You were able to get there, and it sounded fantastic by the time we were able to get it. It just took a little bit longer. Jazz is more tonally complex and the chords and everything like that. So ultimately, I was really proud of you guys for being able to take a piece that high schoolers shouldn't be able to do because it's meant for, for you know, a, a much more advanced ensemble, and you guys still did it. It's like the bumblebee flying. You can't explain how it works, but it, it just, works. It does. All right. It's Tell a mystery. Me- Tell me about a, a song that you discovered or, or had a deeper appreciation for because of Encore. Honestly, I love all the songs, but when I first joined Encore, I actually thought it was going to be more of a modern pop culture kind of song. It's just like, you know, Katy Perry, Justin Bieber, you know. I was like, are we about to sing Baby by Justin Bieber? <laughs> but, we would never sing Baby by Justin Bieber <laughs> yeah. next year. Yeah, that's why I like this class. <laughs> um, no, but... One of the songs that I truly enjoyed was Autumn Leaves by, sung by Nat King Cole. And oh, I am God. such a 50s girl. I am such an oldies. And, and I just, I appreciated how all of us were able to just serenade with the melody. And all of us just, I could see all of the connection that we all had, the eye connection and everything. And I, I just felt so connected with that song. That's a great one. Hmm. Yes. Um, even Bob Dylan's version works for me. I, it probably doesn't work for you, but it works for me. I actually didn't know Bob Dylan had covered that song. Now I'm interested it's in sent, the melancholy. It's dripping with melancholy oh, yeah, and regret. It's such a great song. We, you and I need to talk about more 50s songs, <laughs> Antonella. Okay, tell me about your song. Um, Cruella de Vil was really fun to me because I got more into it because I am a huge Disney fan. So, And I, I grew up watching 101 Dalmatians, and I loved that show so much. So it's more of like a mentality and a personal connection with that. What does it mean to have Mr. Evans as your choir director? What impact has he had on you? Be kind. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, in so many ways, he's given me just like the love and drive to succeed in music that I hadn't really had before. He showed me as just being an example of somebody who was able to make music work for him as a career and also just who just had a genuine love for it and a desire to share it with other people um, and just to make us the best that we could be as people, not even just musicians and as singers, but as humans as well. Um, and just it, it's meant so much to have him um, and just be um, a mentor and a guide and just an inspiration to be just the best that I can be. Yeah, um, he's made music fun, I guess, for me, because usually it's so serious and competitive, and, like, if you're not this great, then you you can't do music, but it's just, like, no matter what level you're at, like, you can still sing, you can still do whatever, and it can be fun. You don't have to make it so serious. Oh, I definitely agree. I think he's put a balance in what we love most, um, and also just for, for those that want to just do it for fun as a habit or for people that actually want to do it professionally he gives us that opportunity but still gives us fun and honestly I think I think he's definitely gave us um, a huge love for this and especially for acapella because a lot of high schools don't do acapella so I'm just really grateful that we have a teacher that has come from a more professional background especially BYU um, and he's just brought it to us and I think I'm so grateful for having that opportunity he's pretty cool since he is young, uh, it, he's more in tune of how we're aware of what we're going through. I mean, kind of like me. The, the young guys, we get yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Which, yeah. And, it, and it just means that I'll become less and less uh, capable as a teacher the older I get. Yeah, you've, you've basically absolutely. built in an expiration date for his effectiveness. Yeah. But, you know, he's getting there. for now, it seems like things are going great. Yeah, it, it's... It's, it's fun here at West Jordan. I know that most of the kids that, that come into the choir program aren't planning to become professional musicians, right? They, they plan to do other things. They're here to have fun. And the two lessons that I hope to instill in my students is that you have more fun when you're good rather than just when you're goofing around, right? But that also um, you, you have more fun when you trust each other and trust yourselves. And uh, that's, I think, one of the things that has made our program 
kind of make this shift in the last couple of years toward more inclusivity, more uh, broader range of genres. You know, you heard we've got an opera singer and a musical theater and a more traditional, conventional guy. We can all still sing together because in the end, it's just music. Stay with us when we come back. Encore performs, and it is something you simply don't want to miss. Hello, I'm Sandy Reesgraff, Director of Communications for Jordan School District, and we want to invite you to connect with us. So many exciting things are happening in your child's school, your neighbor's school, in every school here every day. Don't miss out on following the fun or simply staying informed when there's important information we need to share. Join us at jordandistrict.org or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Jordan District. We can't wait to connect. Tell me about how you came to choose this year's song and what resulted from that recording and that video. Yeah, the way we chose this year's song, it was all kind of serendipitous. Um, we go on tour every year, and as part of that, we fundraise. And so in the fall, we had a fellow come to organize um, one of our fundraisers, and just kind of by happenstance, he started talking about um, how his dad had had this dream of co-writing a song with Jason Mraz his whole life. Ever since he'd seen Jason Mraz as an up-and-coming artist, his dad had said, I'm going to write a song for that guy to sing. And that he'd spent 12 years kind of in the industry on the fringes trying to make this happen. And then finally, he was able to connect with Jason Mraz. And he co-wrote I Won't Give Up, which has gone six times platinum wow. with Jason Mraz. <laughs> like, he, he was able to fulfill his dream. Yeah. And I said, oh, I won't give up. I love that. And we all started kind of like singing it and, and making it up on the piano as we went. And, and it blew this guy's mind. And he said, oh, you've got you've to put that in your, your show somewhere this year. And we said, we will, and we'll, we'll let you know. And he said, I will send it to Jason Mraz when, when you do. And we followed through. We decided to make um, our music video this year in Encore was a mashup of I Won't Give Up by Jason Mraz and Hey Jude by Paul McCartney. And um, once we'd made the music video, we sent it to Lennon Natter, who sent it to his father, who had written the song, who lives now two doors down from Jason Mraz. Oh wow! He, the the royalties allowed him to retire and build a house in the neighborhood that Jason Mraz lives in. Their neighbors now. Yeah. So by that sort of like friend of a friend of a friend, um, we we sent the link to uh, and it, it got into Jason Mraz, Jason Mraz's hands and he saw it and um, according to the the photo the signed photo that he sent to us he was impressed by it and he liked it and it's just kind of cool to know that like you know we put this thing together and the guy that originated it saw it. Right. And, and, and to let him know, I mean, he knows it's being covered by a million different artists, but to let my students know you're now part of like a bigger world. It does. It's not just in the classroom. Right. The education and what you're learning and what you're experiencing exist in a bigger sphere. And that was a cool thing, I, I hope, for you guys to experience. And it's a lesson in the impact that music can have. Yes, absolutely. Um, you never know who's who's going to watch um, that music video and be like, oh, man, I needed that today. And that sounds that sounds silly, but that's the the responsibility you have as an artist, as a musician, is to put your best foot forward always because you never know who's listening. Speaking of the photo, you've got it here. It's a big, nice framed photo of Jason Mraz performing. Uh, read read what he what, what he wrote on there for us. Yeah, so he wrote on the photo to Keith Evans and West Jordan High Choir. Let's take a deep breath together. Inhale and exhale. Thank you for your breathtaking performance. Keep singing. And then he signed it. Um, as Lennon, the fellow whose dad worked with Jason on this song, said, he's, he's sort of a uh, kind of a bohemian fellow, and so this inscription is very on brand for him, apparently. Um, but it's cool, again, to know that, um, that he's, he's supportive of this. I'm sure, you know, once upon a time, he was a kid in a high school band or choir saying, you know, I hope I make it one day. And yeah. I think it's fantastic, and it's exciting. I'm envious of this interaction you've had with uh, Jason Mraz, or as I like to call him, Mr. A to Z. Mr. A to, Mr. A to Z, that's right. Yes. Is that his real last name? Yeah, it is. It is? That's cool, man. <laughs> it's like that's such a marketable last name. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, we're going to link to the video in the show notes. Cool. So watch for that. Click on it. It's a great video, like it is every year. Like I said, I always look forward to it.
Thank you so much for providing this rich learning experience that I'm sure these students will never forget. And uh, thank you for putting your own personal twist on this music program. And thank you for the annual videos that I'll continue to look forward to. And uh, those the, just the great performances coming out of this program. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Godfrey. Now here's a little clip from their music video. <laughs> into your eyes It's like watching the night sky Or a beautiful sunrise There's so much they hold Just like them old stars To see how you've come so Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Supercast. Remember, education is the most important thing you'll do today. We'll see you out there.